Hello and welcome to the special series of videos brought to you by VMware. Now in a world redefined by technology, new priorities emerge every day for organizations to survive and thrive. So how do these companies unshackle themselves from the limits of physical network infrastructure to shape a future of unlimited possibilities. To find out the answer to that question, we have with us B.S. Nagarajan, Chief Technologist at VMware India. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Nagarajan. Uh, my first question to you, you know, what should be the strategic IT priorities for companies looking to embrace digital transformation? Thank you, Gautam, first of all, for this opportunity. Uh, when you talk about uh, strategic IT priorities, more than we prescribing these priorities for companies, what we hear from customers that are strategic priorities for them uh, typically falls into four buckets. Uh, the most common one that we hear is customers want to get rid of their legacy infrastructure and want to modernize their data centers. That's the first step, right? So modernizing data centers and making it more efficient is the first one. The second priority that we hear from customers is they are increasingly interested in how do we move to a multi-cloud world. So it is no longer private or a public or something like that. They are interested in moving to a single hybrid cloud or multiple clouds, right? So how do we integrate multiple clouds? That's the second priority. While you do all this, the uh, other threat that customers are seeing is with respect to how to protect their brand and customer trust, which brings us to the point of security and networking, right? So obviously the older traditional model doesn't cut ice. So how can you transform networking and security, right? So that's the third priority. And last but not the least, your journey of digital transformation is not complete without empowering employees. Employees are at the heart of any digital transformation story. Mm -hmm. So how can you provide a digital uh, experience or a workspace for employees is the fourth priority that customers are looking at. All right, now let's expand on these four strategic pillars, uh, starting with a software-defined data center. How can leveraging virtualization help enterprises becoming more agile and simplify their operations, which can in turn re uh, lead to lower costs? You know, illustrate with some case studies here. Yeah, so it's very simple. I'm sure uh, you have heard about the success that we uh, had thanks to virtualizing compute for the last one decade or so. And there are a lot of benefits of virtualization which I'll not get into now. But um, we said why not extend these benefits of virtualization to other pillars of infrastructure in the data center. So we said, okay, virtualize your storage, virtualize your network, because unless you virtualize all these components of the data center, your entire data center cannot be software defined, right? So you can achieve the benefits only when you virtualize all these components of the data center, right? For example, how if you say uh, compute is virtualized and storage is still manual mm. and allocating storage has a lot of complexity, how can you deliver services you know, with agility, right? All right? So you've got to virtualize all these components. Okay. okay, and in terms of say solutions that you offer would say something like a vSphere 6.5 be of, of use to these enterprises? When oh, we talk about virtualization. Yeah. So when you talk about a software defined data center, it has basically three pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, compute is done by vSphere and the latest release is vSphere 6.7, mm -hmm. which has got a lot of enhancements to it. Uh, then comes uh, vSAN as part of the software defined storage. Mm -hmm. Again, vSAN 6.7 brings in a lot of enhancements uh, today. And uh, recently we were declared as the number one vendor when it comes to uh, HCI. And the last piece is networking, which is traditionally seen the least amount of innovation in the data center. And uh, NSX mm -hmm. does the magic when it comes to network virtualization. All right, let's shift focus. Now, apps are core to any digital business, but adoption-wise, very few enterprises are you know, going cloud native with apps. So why is that uh, you know, an issue? And is there a clear need now for enterprises to adopt a sort of cloud native tool set? Yeah, so this is very tricky, right? I mean, cloud native apps is where the future lies, right? Every customer wants to adopt that. But the challenge there is these technologies are still evolving. There are a lot of companies that you will find who are working in the open, uh, open source model of containers and other stuff, right? They are still evolving. They don't have production capabilities. They're still not mature. The tool sets that are available for virtual missions are not available 
for containers yet, which is why we see customers are still struggling to adopt. But I think uh, today we have partnered with Google and Pivotal to launch what is called as the Pivotal Container Service, which solves this problem. So customers can increasingly look at adopting uh, you know, these cloud native applications going forward. All right, and do you believe that the benefits of SDDC cannot be truly translated unless and until the network is virtualized? What's the solution there? Oh, absolutely, right. Uh, because today, like I said before, there has been a lot of innovation that has happened in compute and storage, thanks to many vendors like Intel and you know EMC, NetApp, and all of them, right? But when it comes to networking, I think we have seen very little innovation, and still a lot of things are done manually, and they are slower, and it is more expensive, right? So network, uh, networking is one thing that's sort of pulling down the ability of IT to run at the pace of business, right? So definitely you cannot achieve the benefits of SDDC unless the network is virtualized. All right, and for the benefit of our viewers, give us some use cases on how you know, network virtualization can, you know, can, be, can be used for driving adoption. Uh, very simple, Gautam. Uh, the popular use cases of network virtualization falls into three categories, right? The first one, which is the most popular one, is security, mm. right? Uh, who's not worried about security, right? Irrespective of which industry you are into, irrespective of where your application is running on and what technologies, whatever, right? Security is a very big concern, right? So that's the first use case where network virtualization helps, right? The second use case which is popular is automation. Like I said before, you have brought in automation on compute, you have brought in automation on storage, but if you tell a user that you need to wait 45 days for network, it doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? So network automation is the second popular use case, mm -hmm. right? The third use case that we are seeing is on business continuity or application continuity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, DR solutions have been there for a long time, but RTO, you would have heard about uh, recovery time objective, which is very important for customers, right? How can you reduce the RTO further in order to give a very high uptime for your applications? These are the three use cases which are very popular uh, among customers for adopting network virtualization. All right, now hyper-converged uh, infrastructure adoption rates have gone up significantly, but is, you know, is it useful for every use case, especially where all workloads are not equal. You know, with some applications might need large amounts of data, while others might require significant network bandwidth. What's your view on this? Yeah, so initially you're right. Uh, the observation is correct that uh, not all use cases uh, were applicable for HCI, and you still had a, a, a play for traditional external shared storage, and some use cases for HCI. But in the last 12 to 18 months, the uh, amount of enhancements that have happened in the industry on hyperconverged uh, has made it uh, almost imperative for customers to look at HCI for almost all the use cases today. Uh, of course, the popular use cases are DR, you know, backup and test and development and, you know, but today mm -hmm. we have lots of customers who are using HCI for mainstream production, replacing the traditional storage. So I would say uh, most of the use cases in storage today, in the storage world, can be met by hyperconverged. Mm -hmm. There could still be a couple of use cases here and there where you know an enterprise class storage may be uh, a better option. All right, now let's look at the second pillar, which is integrating public and private clouds for enterprises. Now there are many challenges there as well when it comes to you know uh, compliance, security, costs. Uh, so how can these be dealt with in your opinion? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is an interesting problem to have. Uh, if you see all of these challenges are already solved in a private cloud, mm -hmm. right? There is no dearth of solutions for security, compliance, and all of these things. But then when you move to a public cloud, not that it is less secure or it is not compliant, it's just that the tools are different. The methodologies used by an AWS and an Azure and a Google are all different in nature, right? So customers are looking for consistency. How can I have a consistent infrastructure and a consistent operations, whether my application runs on a private cloud or on a public cloud? That is what is solved by our second priority, which is integrating multiple clouds, right? So we are able to offer customers a consistent operations across both private and public clouds, okay. where you can use the same tools 
to provide compliance, to provide security and give you visibility, operations management and all of that. Alright, but isn't security going to be a bit more tricky? You know, how do Indian enterprises deal with the security challenges of today but keeping an eye on tomorrow? Yeah, so this is where uh, I'm sure you would have heard about uh, recent launch that we made of one of our uh, solutions which is called as virtual cloud networking, right? Because security is not just applicable to a workload that is running on-premises data center. That's the past, right? Where our application was running in one place and you protect that piece and your application is safe, right? But today, applications partly are running on-premises, partly are running on public clouds, they are running on endpoint devices, we are talking about IoT where, you know, there is something running on those sensors, right? And you're talking about mobile devices. So, security is across all of these things, mm. right? Which is where virtual cloud networking talks about how can you secure all of these different endpoints. Mm. But isn't that the big question? How do you enforce security at a granular, yes. granular level of the data center and yet be consistent across the entire application? Give us some use cases on how these things could work. Yeah, so this is where uh, one of the uh, technologies that we pioneered, which is called as micro-segmentation, is very, very popular, mm. right? So micro-segmentation gives customers the ability to uh, partition the network into smaller segments. That's why it's called micro-segmentation, right? Split it into smaller segments so that even if there is some malware, you know, attacking one of these segments, and let's face it, right, you can't say it's going to be a zero malware environment, mm -hmm. right? How much ever we desire for that, I think we will always have uh, bad guys ahead of the good guys, so you will have a malware sneaking into your network. But what uh, what is important is how can we prevent the damage? Mm -hmm. How can we contain the damage to only a small segment? Mm -hmm. And that's where micro-segmentation helps it. Does it work for government organizations as well? Because they are very vulnerable to uh, you know many of the threats the, that we see across the security universe. And with governments now also operating in a sort of post-PC mobile era, how can they improve citizen delivery and mission outcomes through you know workforce mobility without compromising on the whole security aspect? Absolutely, it's a fantastic question, right? What is interesting is in India, governments have leapfrogged other parts of the world in embracing these, uh, you know, uh, workforce mobility-based solutions. For example, let me give you the example of uh, government of Telangana, right? Mm -hmm. They use tablets. Of course, there are lots of private enterprises who use tab banking and so on and so forth. But government of Telangana was one of the first ones, and of course, Andhra Pradesh government, right? They were one of the first ones to adopt uh, tablets in large scale for their government employees in order to deliver citizen-centric uh, services at the doorstep of citizens, right? So it is no longer a, a person coming to a government department to question about his uh, pension. It is about a government officer going to the doorstep of a citizen and ensuring that his pension is delivered. Mm. Now when you do this, it is very easy to do this by giving a tablet to a person, but how do you ensure that the tablet as well as the contents are not misused and they are protected, right? So that is one of the examples where uh, thousands and thousands of tablets are on the field and the applications and data that are delivered through these tablets are all protected using network virtualization and security. So it's a brave new world not just for enterprises but also Absolutely. for the government. Yes. On that note we will conclude this interview. Thank you so much Mr. Nagarajan for sparing us time. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you.